Okay? Yeah. Okay. Uh, takes us to the next question. What about Islam? How many would like to know about Islam? Yeah, you know, I heard something on the television on Fox said uh, that they uh, actually believe that most or almost all of the uh, uh, Islamic uh, warriors or whatever are going to die. There'll be 5,000 left, and they are going to meet Jesus in Jerusalem. Now, I just heard this. I don't know if that one, I just said, what? So, I don't know. I haven't I, heard that one before. Haven't? Okay. Then it must have been something off the wall, because I was like, I've never heard this before. I haven't heard that one before. Okay. Okay. I, I did, you know, that was somebody was on one of those programs. And I was, well, okay. When the Antichrist comes on the scene, He's got to be able to unite the whole world in a false unification, but nevertheless, it's got to be a unification. The stage is set for that. Let me explain to you how the stage is set for that. In Islam, they worship the God of? Muhammad. Abraham. Abraham. Okay. Muhammad is his prophet, prophet, but they worship the God of Abraham. Judaism worships the God of Abraham. Abraham. Even those that quote profess Christianity worship the God of Abraham. Abraham. Boy, you got that good, Bill. Now he's going to have to unify them by the God of Abraham. Unfortunately, he's going to be the false God of Abraham. You understand that? It's not the real God of Abraham. Because he's not bringing real peace, he's bringing a false peace. And it's when Israel rejects the Antichrist that all of the rest turn against him. There are some books out about the first and second and third Christ. I don't recommend that you read them, but I have read them and I understand what they're saying. A lot of people think that Mohammed was, quote, the second Christ, and that Jesus was the first Christ. The only trouble is, that deletes him being God. Right. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. There isn't a first and a second and a third Christ, but there are enough people that are looking at that and thinking that way, that they're looking for another Messiah type like Jesus to step on the field. I'll take this a step farther. Cloning has gone way past what I ever thought cloning would go. I think the first session I told you about cloning, mm -hmm. I'll remind you. When I was in high school, we brought frog eggs in, and we cloned the frog eggs. But first we got the frog so that the frog would lay the eggs so there was no male frogs around, because otherwise they'd already been fertile. So we knew that they were unfertile eggs. And we took a real fine pin and pricked each one of those frog eggs, and every one of them hatched. It was called cloning. Every one of them looked exactly like the mother. Isn't that interesting? Well, they have the robe of Sharon. If they take that blood, that DNA, they'd be able to make a clone. I've seen that on TV. Except that, yeah, yeah, you've already seen this. I'm not making it up. Right. Except that. That clone isn't going to be from God. Ooh. Right. Isn't that interesting? Now, I'm not saying that's exactly how it's going to happen, but that potential is there. I think they already granted them to take a little bit of it. They already, they already have it. They, they have the sample, have, but they yeah, haven't done anything with it yet. They haven't done anything sample of what? The blood of off the blood. of the shroud. Off of that the shroud. shroud of but not of... Uh, no. So you, you understand yes, the possibilities yeah. that are there. Either way, there has to be that unification. Now, I said, what about no. Islam? Let me share this with you. Does God love the Islamic people? Yes. How much? Just not as much as us. <laughs> We're going to give you a couple points for that laugh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How much does God love the Islamic people? About that much. 
as much as everybody. <laughs> same Bill. Yeah. He loves them as much, much as, as everybody. everybody. Yeah. The same Jesus that died for us died for them. Who should we be introducing them to if we have opportunity to? We need to introduce them to the Messiah. The living Messiah who rose from the dead. Understand? Mohammed didn't. Jesus did. That's why there's only one Christ. Only one Christ. We pray for them as well. It's interesting how it goes. And you already know this. In the prophecies that you read, these nations that are all around Israel, somebody gets them all together to attack Israel. But in order to get them all together to attack Israel, he has to hire a whole other nation just to be a guard against them so they don't kill each other. Oh. That's in the scripture. Is that Ezekiel 38? Because I was reading 38 because you have down there uh, today's happening in and about Israel. And I said, well, that's Ezekiel 38 because when I read it, <laughs> you know, that, that's what's And so you see that. Yeah. And you look at your all the nations that quote profess to be Islamic, but is there unity there? Unity? Unity. No. No. no absolutely not. Does, does, Although, does Syria like Iran? No. Does Iran like Syria? No. And how about Egypt? Does Egypt and Iran get along? No. no. Does Egypt and Syria get along? No. Now they're starting because they're now they're both fighting with ISIS. So that's what I was waiting for you to come to. There's you know, and now they're actually Jordan is talking to Israel and wanting to have uh, asking Israel to bomb, uh, guide their bombers to the places like cooperation. Wow. Wow. They're all heathens, though, aren't they? They're heathens. <laughs> heathens and infidels. There are not any more heathen and infidels than people in the United States that don't go to church, or people in the United States that do go to church but don't believe what the Bible says. Yeah, but most people in the United States don't run around cutting people's heads off. Oh. But it doesn't have anything to do with that particular thing. What it has to do with, because they have no relationship with Jesus or with God. And that's what they need. <laughs> and yes, they might more than that. <laughs> no, they might that's not, what they need. They might not be cutting their heads off in uh, that physical sense, but there's a lot of cutting of heads off. That's all these things that you've been seeing written in the paper. All what things? All that. Uh, and the, we call it political, what do you call it? Oh, sabotage or yeah. undermining? Yeah. Throwing? It's the same as cutting somebody's head off. It's the same as cutting somebody's head off. It, I, don't, I don't know. I, I don't know. It's pretty brutal. That they are. That it is. Yeah. I mean, you can withstand some of that other stuff to do the stuff they're doing and then put it on TV and rub it in the parents' faces and all that. It's not far from my uh, ain't over yet either. No. Mm -hmm. So you understand, if somebody would step in right now as a united force to unite all those nations and to take care of the terrorists, they could be established as what? King of the world. Say it again. King of the world. Mm. Right now. Looking at the situation in the United States, That's if Trump, Trump, somebody could step in and do that. Yeah, and we're not going to do much about it That's with our president. But we're actually going to be behind them. Probably. We're going to we're going to commit our loyalty to that particular person, and not Israel. because he's getting rid of the terrorism. All of Islam will commit their loyalty to that person. Even Jerusalem will commit their loyalty to that person. See how the stage is set? That's why you pray for their eyes to be on God. And our eyes to be on God. Now, I went through all that to let you know, Jesus said, you know how to look at the sky and know if it's going to storm. He says, learn how to look at the happenings, only what the real happenings are. Not the physical things, but the spiritual things behind them. In Islam, there's no regard for human life. God doesn't appreciate that. That's got to change. We've already seen the seeds of that change from the Islamic worshippers in our nation because they think of themselves as peaceful Islamic worshippers. 
and they probably are now. Understand that. They probably are. You get a guy that steps on the scene that really emphasizes that peaceful Islamic, the Islamic thing. We've got our king. The stage is closer now than it has ever been. Understand that. It's closer now than it has ever been. I gotta say something. So the thing that we stand for, we pray for the spiritual climate. To do that, I need to pray for whose spiritual climate first. This is what I think our own ourselves. See? <laughs> our own. Our own. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and will pray, I will hear from heaven, I will hear them then. I pray first of all for me to be right. That right means right attitudes. We talked about that last week. That's when you know you're prayed through. Yeah. When you really don't like something, and next thing you know, you're prayed all the way to where you're weeping and saying, God, change okay. that yeah. in me. Yeah. That's when you know you're prayed through. Then you begin to pray for those around us. We begin to pray for Israel and the spiritual impact. We ask for their eyes to be open on what's happening spiritually because that's just as important as what's happening physically, actually more important than what's happening physically. How many understands that? Yeah. So we watch Israel with what's happening spiritually in mind. So the next time you look at some news, follow up and see what they're doing with their fallow land. Follow up. You can look up about that temple online, incidentally. Follow up okay. and take a look at those particular things. Um, look at what, but this is what I like to read. About three years ago, maybe four years ago, one of their top uh, rabbi priests over there had written in the in the Jerusalem newspaper, whatever it was, he, yeah, the Jerusalem Post, he'd written these words about the return of the Messiah. And I read that. Return. Yeah. They, the Jews think that he hasn't come yet, so he's coming. Well, this, this, That's rabbi, great. this rabbi thought he must have been here already. Wow. And so we need to look for his return. Wow. And he's not even a messianic rabbi. Wow. And he's writing that in the newspaper. I got excited. I got to tell you, I got excited. It's showing a spiritual climax that they're looking. And you have more and more of them that are there that are looking for the return or the coming, whichever you want to look at it, they're looking for the rise of that Messiah. Well, that Messiah, they wanted to make king. Yeah. That's what they... <laughs> they That's what they're looking for. Says if they're not and looking, this could be the chance for... If they're not looking for the right Messiah... That's right. Then we see the Antichrist stepping up. Yep. Now do you understand why it's so important to pray for the peace of Jerusalem? Mm -hmm. Robin, mm -hmm. you had a question or something to say? No, I, I was just thinking about something about how when, um, like those people, how much their faith, um, well, I just had a couple of, two different, couple of thoughts. Like their faith over there, um, we're seeing stuff on TV, but we're not there. Okay. So, so, I mean, can you imagine how horrific that is living there? in that constant state of fear every day, with bombs being dropped on you, you know, people being beheaded, I mean, just horrific things that are happening, and it's all around you, and you don't know who to trust and stuff like that, so I know you're supposed to turn to God, but lots of times that doesn't happen because you turn away from God, and it's like, or you just completely shut down when you're being oppressed and abused. And, like, I watched this thing on Saturday about the uh, Russian hockey players, and I never realized, you know, I thought they honored their athletes, but really, they had them in a prison and everything, like, 11 months out of the year, and how badly they were really treated. They weren't allowed to see their families or, you know, go home for holidays or anything, and, like, those men were like machines. That's what they were, the red machines. And, um... Like, when they asked some questions, it was like they they had no feeling about that. There was no feeling there. It was just the only pretty much feeling they had was like a fear of the authority of the um, their czar or whatever, their president, you know. And um, so, I mean, that's like a lot of people go in the other direction. 
And I know what you're going to probably say, but there's more Christians over there. There are, lot, right? there are a lot of Christians over there. We have. Uh, God bless you. We have more and more Christians going over there all the time. But they also have a lot of people over there. And there's a lot of people over there. God bless you. There's so many people over there that uh, that uh, people that have master's degrees are driving taxi cabs. We have that here. We have that here. We <laughs> still working at McDonald's. In the that might be the climate of the world at the present time. Uh-huh. Next week, there's no Bible study next week. Next week on Wednesday night, we're having a meeting with all of our workers from the church to go over some things about. Uh, uh, security clearances and things like that so they know that um, the week after that it'll be in the bulletin what we're going to be studying the week after that I gotta ask you this because this has been my focus for a while how'd you like meeting in here around the conference table if we get bigger than this we're going to go downstairs in the fellowship hall around the tables down there I think it's a little bit more communicative is that a big word <laughs> so we're done with this one watching Israel more people this is the end of watching Israel that's